What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to build a moon goat. For you guys who don't know what a moon goat is, if you're new to the channel, if you don't know who I am, my name is Corey Tapp. Everybody knows me as Cricket FPV in the FPV industry. Uh, recently I've came out with a couple new products to build your first professional FPV drone. And I'm going to show you guys how to build it. So if you guys have parts or you have anything, every part that, I, that we're going to go over today, I will have a link in the description if you guys want to purchase if you haven't yet. For those who have the things, if you guys want to get your parts together in a pile because we are about to get started. Uh, please hang out afterwards because I have a flight edit that I flew the other day. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for supporting me. Without you guys, this would just I wouldn't even be here I wouldn't be able to bring you guys awesome products but uh, please leave comments for any other questions that you have after the video I uh, will go through those and find anything else I need to add uh, we I actually did not film the setup on beta flight or anything yet so I'm gonna do that in a part two video so look out for that and uh, again guys thanks for the years of support and let's jump right into this we are going to build us a moon goat today. Not only are we going to build a moon goat, we are also going to, we're going to do the whole build. So I'm going to let you guys know what you need to have in front of you if you want to follow along and build this at the same time I am. Uh, that was already open. <laughs> and our Vista. So here's what we got here. So these are the four things you, I'm going to the, yeah, four things you're going to need. Four Cricut motors. A ESC, a flight controller, which are both Cricut as well, the Moon Goat, and also a Cadex Vista. All right. Uh, I'm going to build this exactly how I actually built my quad. So I know people are like, oh, I can do it quicker, easier. Yes, but this is just the way I built mine. Okay, so first what we're going to do is we're going to get these. Let's actually get everything out the wrapper. Let's do also, I just want to mention that the Cricut uh, ESC comes with all the screws needed to fit the Cricut frame. All the lengths, different lengths of the uh, connectors between the ESC and flight controller. We're going to use this medium sized guy. Alright. That medium guy. So you can put that to the side. We're going to need... Let's get that out of the way. We're going to need these four longer screws. Then we're going to need oh, that guy. Four nuts. So we're actually going to need eight nuts out of here. And I know we're doing this kind of crazy, but you'll see in a second why I do it this way. Everybody likes to build stuff and look at it. You know, you're like, oh, let's look, looking, look like it's looking for something. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get this flight controller out as well. It's not really such a main necessity right now, but. All right. Now, out of the motor screws, it comes with eight different screws. We're going to use the longest ones out of these. Just go ahead and. Go ahead and cut them open, get them all out. Then we can just separate. Just makes everything go a lot quicker. If you have everything already out of the package, you're not opening stuff up. All right, so let's get this out of there. Okay, so now we have our motor, motor screws there. We have our stack screws and nuts here. All right, stack, Vista motors okay so now just push all this stuff up to the top we'll keep it in view though so you guys can make sure i'm not doing no rigmarole put all those together and put this stack and everything over here put this over here now we're gonna undo the moon goat now here's i just want you guys to open your pack up and just make sure you have all the pieces in there we haven't really had too many issues with that but i just want to make sure just so you know you should have a top plate, camera cage, two packs of arms. You're also going to have the back plate and your shim that holds down your arms. And you're also going to need your bottom plate. The pack of screws, they come with everything. We're going to set those to the side. You also have your battery pad to put on. And, of course, this cool tag, keychain. Alright, so we're going to put everything, put this to the, the arms to the side. 
we're going to put the top plate to the side and we're just going to concentrate right now on the bottom plate all right so again let's go ahead and open this up So actually, before I get super started on this, what I want to say is you are going to need a, a two millimeter Allen, a 2.5 millimeter Allen, some wire strippers, Loctite, and also uh, double sided tape. And I'll do a picture of that in a second. But uh, so you guys can see everything that was needed. OK, so here's what's crazy about the way I built my quad. So I take this center section and I go ahead and I build my stack. I built my, my stack screws. Now, this is the front of the of the quad. So I like to move these screws, how they have these slots. I like to keep those as far forward towards the front of the quad as possible. All right. So you're going to take that and you're going to go ahead and just screw that on. You're going to need four of them just in case. I, don't, I know some people know what they're doing already, but I just want to make sure everybody has a really good idea of what's going on. So we're going to take those four, we're going to throw those on there, and I'll show you why I like to do this first, just because I like to get everything, you know, put things together separately versus putting them together when like the whole frame's built, then I'm like trying to hustle, trying to get this past the arm or get that past that, in which we made the build pretty relatively simple, so you shouldn't have those issues, but this just makes it that much easier. Now we'll probably fast forward through this till I have all the screws in. And you can also do this for any, uh, if you're doing 30 by 30, 20 by 20, this does both of those. You'll just use for 30 by 30, you'll just use these outer slots. I feel like the slotted way is the way to go. So just in case whatever ESCs now are like different shapes and sizes and some are longer, some are wider. So I wanted to make it just so that anything could fit in. You wouldn't have an issue with that because that always sucks when you go to build something and, uh, and you don't have everything you need. All right, we're going to put this last screw in there. Now everything is perfectly sized too, so like these screws will not touch the top of the frame. Everything has a perfect amount of clearance that it should along with the motor screws. So I like to just hand tighten these up like that. Just put a nice little turn on them, hold it with your finger. All right, so now we have that. I like to put my ESC in. Now my ESC, I like to put my, again, this is the front of the quad, this is the back. I like to go ahead and put my battery lead on the outer edge right hand side of it so that bow now that's good all right so now we're good for that so now i'm going to put this to the side sorry if i'm moving the camera but i like to see what's going on all right we're going to move this to the side now this is going to be the longer thing so we're going to go ahead and open up all of our arms all of them <laughs> there's four of them it's like an actual cricket there's four of them Alright, sorry if the lighting's not the best. I see that shadow right there. It kind of sucks. I was trying to get that out of there. Alright, so now we have our four arms. These go together like in this pattern. Back front. Alright, so now what I like to do now is I like to put my motors on the arms. I like to get it. Now, I use Loctite on everything. I'm not doing on this because I ran out, but Loctite everything. You don't need to go overkill. Just one little dab and you're good to go. All right, so I'm going to start by putting this motor on here. Again, this is where those that two millimeter came into. Don't forget, make sure you use the longer of the two screws so you don't have any issues. Now, I'm just going to throw two screws in each motor just for video purposes but you want to put all four in definitely want to use all four so now we have our four arms and we have our center four arms so i'm gonna go ahead and just lay this out like that all right so now we have those components on sorry about that guys so the reason why i do this is because now i'm gonna put my arms on my my bottom plate 
and I'm and I'm pretty much done with screwing things on. And then I can have everything set up to where I can solder everything together. Um, so now we're going to move on to this package here. Let me go ahead and open these up. This is the back plate. So this is going to go with this nut showing on the top. And I'll tell you why that is in a second. And then we're also going to need this piece here. And this piece is going to be for the front. Also, again, with the nut sticking up. Okay, so now we got those things laid out. I'm going to move these screws out of the picture. You should already have those in. Arms, move those up. Okay, so now in your package of screws, move this up out of the way, you'll have four longer screws. These are going to be for the stack, I mean for your arms, and I'll show you how that goes in a second. These are going to be for your front camera cage, the two longer ones, but we'll get to that. And these are going to be your regular standoffs for your quad. Also in that, you're going to have these two shoulder screws. All right. Yeah, my table's like a mess. Tried to keep it clean, but it's hard to do that. Everybody knows when you're building something, that's a pain to do. Okay, so we're going to take our four standoffs. We're going to put those over there. There's actually five. Okay, so first let's just go ahead and do the back. And what we're going to do with that is open up your four longer screws. All right. So, I know the most unorganized build you've ever seen. <laughs> so here's what I like to do. I like to take this, take my shoulder bolt. Now also don't forget we will be using Loctite. I'm just not doing it. Well, you should use Loctite. I'm just not doing it right now just because I don't have any left. So I'm gonna come back and do that. So again, this shiny, the bigger part of the screw is gonna be on the top and just Put a couple threads in. I went a little too far. Back it back out, like so. So you have that. Now you have something, some stability. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide your arm in. It'll fit in that little crevice. You'll know it's right once it lines up. Hold that together like so. Line your, well, now I'm having a problem with it. <laughs> here there you go so once you get your hole lined up you should be able to see right through it and then just go ahead and slide that in put a little pressure on there okay don't forget you're going to lock tight this nut or that uh screw and then i just go ahead and just slap your stand off on all right pretty simple same thing with this one just going to slide it in line your line your hole up put your screw in the tolerances are really good on this like oh, they did such a good job on that everything's nice and tight the way it should be so some of them might be a little tighter once you get that other side in so then just take your two screw that bad boy in there like I said some of the tolerances are really dead on so as you can see it almost tightens itself together okay once you got that we're gonna do the same thing don't forget Loctite not a lot just a little Okay, so now we have the back part of our quad together. Now, nothing super tight. Like I said, I'm just, you can go ahead and snug up this little center screw just a little bit. And we'll get it all lined up in a second. All right, so now we have that taken care of. Now we're going to go ahead and do the front. The front's pretty much going to be the same way. We're going to take this plate. As you can see, the plate only lines up really one way. See that? 
how it matches with that corner. So we're going to take our shoulder bolt again, the second shoulder bolt. Just rest that on there, line that up, put a couple threads in. Then, like I said, we'll do the same thing with the front screws, I mean with the front arms, fit that in there. Once we get our hole lined up, Just go ahead and just give that a couple twists in. Tolerances are tight. I mean, it fits together like a glove. And with all these screws, make sure you are using a very good tool. Not one that's dulled out or anything like that. Because if not, you will strip the screws. And in that case, we do sell hardware kits. <laughs> but just use, find yourself a good tool. And make sure you, you hold it in there really good so that you don't strip any of the screws out. So as you see how tight that is, once you screw that through there, we, even without the standoff, it's super tight, you know. So we're going to go ahead and put the second one in. Same thing with the screw. Put your two on there. Again, we're going to use Loctite. I'm sorry if I keep saying it. I just want you guys to really know, like, use Loctite. Just a little dab on everything. And then we're going to go ahead and screw that in. So now you guys see why I built it like this. So as you can see, we haven't been working on it that long, 20 minutes. We got everything lined up. We got our motors on. We have our ESC in place. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back with our uh, with our two millimeter, and actually let's go ahead and do the center first. You don't want to make these things super crazy tight. You just want to go ahead and just give it a couple nice firm. Once you get it around, once you get it there, give it like another like quarter turn, half turn. You'll feel it tighten up. Like I said, everything fits together. Go ahead and give it that. Again, make sure you use a fresh tool so that you don't have any problems. Sometimes you might have to hold the standoff a little bit on the top because it'll spin, but not a big deal. Okay, so now we have this. Now we're going to take some electrical tape and we're just going to wrap our motor wires to our arm how I like to do that is I just go ahead and put it right about there then just make sure that you hold these things flat like that and then just give it a nice little wrap around like so all right and we're going to go ahead and repeat that for all all right my gopro shut down for some reason because i guess the heat but uh hopefully this light isn't like killing you guys i tried to fix that but it wasn't happening all right so now we got our tape on all of our motor wires we have our esc in place we have our motors on now what we're going to do is and i should have what we'll do is we'll just take the esc back off and then we'll get this out the way. I don't know which one's worse, guys. Sorry, the light. But so we're going to pre tent all of these. And if you don't know what pre tent is, we're just going to put a little piece of, hold on, some solder on these pads. Sorry, the camera quality is not that good. That's crazy. All right. So go ahead and turn your, we're going to fire up our handy dandy. Solder and iron. Solder and iron. Using bad solder. Make sure you clean the tip. Alright. So I just like to go ahead and heat the pad up a little bit.
Now, I use high heat. I think mine is set at almost 800 right now. But I like to use a lot of heat because I don't stay on the pad very long. I'm only on there for a second. Heat it up. Drop it on there. Heat it up. Drop it on there. And this just makes the overall build just that much easier. We are going to go ahead and do our big pads as well. These you might have to leave on just a tad bit longer. But see how shiny that is? Well, you guys might not be able to see it yet, but it should be nice and shiny. So I also like the, for this one, for the big pad, I like to do a little bit on both sides. Alright, now that we have that done, now we're going to bring our quad back in, make sure it's not hot, so what I like to do with this is just go ahead and fold the wires underneath the back of it, these wires just go ahead and give them a little press down, alright, so this point now is what I like to do. I like to wrap my wire around that side, give it a good little, just so you can place it where you want it. And then I just take a pair of scissors and I just put a little nick in it. Once you put a little nick in it, go ahead and cut it on your line. Strip it back. I do one wire at a time just because I like to make sure that they're perfectly lined up, so we're going to go ahead and also pretend this. I usually use my finger, but you can use uh, tweezers if you like. Alright, so now I got my tweezers. What we're going to do is just going to grab a hold of that bad boy like that. That's it. So this takes a little little longer see where it ends and as you can see since you pretend everything everything just kind of like slides together with a little bit of heat You don't need much, you just need just a little, just a little something, something. All right. Same thing with that one. Like I said, just a little bit of heat. So these should be the only solder points that you have to make on the whole quad, well on the whole build honestly, besides this and your power wire. Simple as one, two, three. See how we have that nice little, nice little curvature. Okay, so now we have all our motor wires soldered up. Motors are. This is why I like to build it this way. Cause now, look at that. So next step is going to be. We're going to actually take 
Remember those plastic nuts that were uh, that we pulled out earlier? We're gonna go ahead and snug our ESC down. Now, if that starts to spin, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and just hold that on the bottom while you spin these while you spin the plastic nut on. All right, so now once you have your four nuts on top of there, you're gonna go ahead and take that medium wire for your ESC to flight controller. Make sure you read these tabs because so some of them will say RXTX ground. We know that that is for the back of the quad, okay? And this front one is gonna be for your ESC. So we're gonna go ahead and click that in there. Always put your thumb against this part while you're pushing this on so it doesn't break anything off of there while you're pushing on it. It shouldn't, but I just like to be safe. Now, once you do that, you're going to go ahead and plug this one into here, like so. Then you're going to take this. If you see the cricket symbol, that should be towards the front of the quad. So I like to go ahead and flatten those out like that. And then run it that way out the back. And then, so now your wire should be coming that way and out the side. Okay, we're not. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to solder up our uh, Vista, and we're going to leave these three wires for our receiver. If you're not running direct to DJI, if you're running like a TBS. Crossfire Nano or something like that. You'll leave those three wires. That's power ground and S bus All right All right Okay, so now that's done So what we're gonna do is just gonna take this and we're gonna spin this around. Okay, now we're gonna take some double sided tape. I'd like to put it on first just to make sure. Now you can also use screws to screw that into the Vista. I just don't happen to have any right now. And throughout all my testing with this frame, I always use double-sided tape. But I'm gonna try to get something together so that we can, uh, so that you can use the screws. Try to get some type of like mounting kit or something. All right, so we're gonna take the double-sided tape off of there. And we're just going to try to line it up in between those two. You want to leave a little space for the TPU mount. Shout out to uh, the FPV geek who makes all the TPU mounts for me. Alright, so here's where things get really nice and clean. You're gonna need. You're gonna need a. It could be a long zip tie, but it needs to be somewhat small. And what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna get that wire right there. And if you want, you can use a little piece of uh, of double sided tape as well. But what I do is I run this down here. You want to make sure that this is on the bottom of the frame, like so. Just make sure it's tight. Then you're just going to like, just work it around with your hand just to get this tight. Make sure it's on top of the carbon ledge. Doesn't need to be super tight. Just needs to be something just to, just to hold that in place. 
finally got that on. Now, I did go ahead and already put the camera cage together. Uh, so, but I'll just explain that to you real quick. The bevels for the recessed screws, that's going to go on the outside of each plate. And you're going to use your two screws that come with the DJI camera. Or if you have aftermarket ones, and just go ahead and snug that up to your desired pitch. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and set that on there like that. I run my camera cable underneath. Some people don't. I just always have. Haven't had an issue out of it. So I'm going to continue to do that. It just makes for a much cleaner build. Should put that under there. And the gyro is on top. So it shouldn't really matter. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug in our... flight controller all right you see how clean that is I mean just it's just clean so and also, also now we're gonna go ahead and just let's just go ahead and put this on just to get this out of the way We almost got a moon goat, guys. All right, so this receiver I'm actually going to not put on right now either. Actually, you know what? Let's just go ahead and put it on. All right, so I'm using a Crossfire Nano receiver. As I think I mentioned before, this is going to be power ground in your S-Bus. This will not do... You will not get to limitry to your transmitter. Now, I just use just battery voltage in my goggles, which goes through the flight controller, so I don't need to use the fourth, fourth wire for this. But what we're really going to do is we're going to run this wire. It's going to be sitting, the receiver is going to sit right on the edge of that, uh, on the bottom plate. So what I'm going to do is we're going to fast forward through this, but I'm going to go ahead and cut these wires to length. Solder this up, wrap that around, get my antenna on, and I'll show you how I do all that. But I'm just going to speed through this section because everybody has different receivers, different antenna. And then we can plug. Plug that back in. Put everything back into place. There we go. So this is the things that I was like saying, like things that took a while and a long time just to make everything exactly how we want it. I mean, just like things like this, that'll just never move. You never have to worry about that. And the cleaner your, your build is, the better it's going to fly. I know everybody says that, but that's just the truth of it. The cleaner your solder joints are, the less chances of little balls, solder blobs popping off. So you really want to take your time and, and do a good job with it. So like I was saying, with the thought process that went into this, you're also going to need two more zip ties. Because I've always ran crossfire, and I always hated that my antenna would sit flush to the ground. So when I would land, it would break my, my zip ties. So here's how you're going to do this. Again, you're going to come from the bottom. Actually, you're going to come from the top. I'm sorry. Like so with your zip tie make sure you get this behind it though and this in front. okay so you're going to run that like that then you're going to bring these both back up like so And what you want to do is you want to, again, have, have this piece here base out on the 
like so. Once you get it lined up, you can really crank down on them. Once you got those done, go ahead and cut your zip ties. All right. So after that, all we're going to do is we're going to slide these this into there. Again, make sure that take a pair of tweezers or something. Once you get this on, before you push down that bottom piece, just pull these wires back just to get those out the way. All right. From there, we're just going to go ahead and put our top plate on. Like so. And actually, I did want to show you guys how this strap works. I think we're the first to actually do a strap like this. This might be a little harder for me to do. Here's what we'll do. So you go ahead and you install the top plate. And then these side pieces, there's two rings. These two slots right there are what this is for. One. Two. And then that's your strap. So you don't have to ever worry about the carbon against the fabric. And then we're going to take the last little bag of screws. complete moon goat thank you guys for watching and i'll see you on the next one when we get this thing in the beta flight and get it all set up Sick. Woo! <laughs>